They say that the best camera is the one that is always with you. And after one year that I sold the Sony A6300, I finally bought it back. The main reason why I bought back this camera is a sentimental feeling. This one was my first camera and the camera that made me really passionate about photography and filmmaking. Last year I decided to sell this camera because I was a little bit disappointed by the new release from uh, Sony in the IPSC line. After I sold that camera I jumped in the full frame world where I really enjoyed the beauty of uh, the full frame sensor but I really really missed the compact size of uh, this camera. A few weeks ago I was looking for a little camera for street photography and family camera because I couldn't really handle it to go out every time with a full frame big camera and uh, while looking around in the used market I found this amazing deal of the Sony A6300 with the Sony 35mm f1.8 OS S for less than 500 bucks. So I was really excited to see that advertising and I went for it and I got it back and I was really excited. There were few characteristics that I was really missing about this camera. The first and the most important for me was the compact size of the camera itself. This is really portable and I can just fit it in the pocket of my jacket and I feel like it doesn't weigh anything. So it's always with me without uh, regrets. The second thing that I really missed about this camera was the video autofocus performances. With this camera I really feel comfortable to use autofocus while I film my child and uh, I am always almost sure that I'm not gonna miss the shot. And if you have a child you know what I'm talking about. When they are doing something amazing you really wanna be fast and capture the moment as fast as possible. So I'm planning to use this camera as my everyday camera, always in the pocket, ready to capture spontaneous moments. But this doesn't mean that I'm not gonna use it for paid work. So I'm planning to use this camera also for gimbal work or for situations where I need a low profile camera while I film or take photos. So these are the reasons why I bought the Sony A6300 for the 2021. I seriously think that this is a serious camera for hardcore photographers that deal with really dangerous things every day to catch that shot. So you should consider one of these cameras as well. If you would like to buy the new series of cameras, I would really recommend you to check the used market of the old series because they are basically the same. They just add the flip out screen that uh, yeah, doesn't really add anything special to the camera. Uh, do I have it here? Yeah. There are few tools like this that you can just stick it on top of uh, your camera and uh, you're gonna be able to see what you're doing. So you, I paid like 11 bucks for this and I solved every problem with every camera that doesn't have a uh, flippy screen. So pretty convenient. After one year that I didn't use this camera and I have more knowledge about post-production, I'm really happy to say that uh, I don't find any limitation on this camera. Except for one big thing. Uh, the rolling shutter is uh, pretty bad. I didn't remember it was so bad. So you really have to be careful with this camera. Uh, you have to know what you are doing when you film in 4K. Because if you don't know the limits of this camera, you really risk to ruin your footage. And if it's a paid gig, it can be problematic. Another thing that I really didn't miss about this camera is the slow writing speed of the SD card. It takes really a while to empty the buffer and the camera is not gonna be really usable after you take a burst of picture and that's pretty annoying. And also another thing that I really don't like about the photography side of this camera is the lack of a front wheel. Considering that this is all, all your controls, uh, this is pretty limiting because if you wanna change the aperture or the shutter working aperture priority or shutter priority, the other second wheel that you can dial is this one for the ISO or the exposure compensation. So it's not really ideal. You can also risk to click everything while operating the camera. So on one side, even if it's extremely compact and portable, 
there are some limits about that and yeah you just have to live with it but i'm extremely happy with the menu system of sony cameras just jogging it's totally crap it's the worst menu system in the world and uh, i'm really sad that they put this menu system also on the new a7c i was considering to buy that camera as my everyday camera but uh, yeah considering that they put that all the technology and all the menus on that camera I thought, yeah, why don't save a lot of money and buy just a Sony A6300? So yeah, I didn't get the Sony A7C. Would I recommend this camera to you? If you're serious about photography and you care about the weight and size of your equipment, absolutely. This camera is pretty outstanding. It delivers uh, beautiful images, both in photography and videography, uh, because yeah, the modern photographers uh, they need also to be able to capture good quality videos. So it is a pretty good hybrid camera for every situation. And if you are ambitious about video work, this camera is pretty decent if you have good knowledge about this camera and what limits uh, you can get with this camera. Because this camera is not able to record 60 frames per second in 4K, it's only able to record in 4K up to 30 frames per second with a crop. Uh, so it's really important to know what you can do in post-production with that footage because there are ways to uh, slow down 30 frames per second up to 50% with uh, dedicated software so you'll be able to fake a 60 frames per second with this camera but you can also superscale 1080p footage in uh, 4K so with this camera that is able to record at 120 frames per second uh, it is pretty convenient because you can have basically 4K 120 frames per second if you know how to superscale the footage. I already made a tutorial about that, so be sure to check somewhere here. I will put the link so you can check that video as well. And if you would like to know my everyday settings for everyday shooting with this camera with easy access and without any problems of swapping a picture profile or settings, be sure to subscribe because I will release a new video talking about that. My name is Luca and if you watched the video until now, thank you so much for staying with me and I hope I'll see you next time. Ciao!